Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing some great habits to have a good night's sleep. And if you're having difficulty sleeping right now, I want you to know that it is possible to train yourself to regularly have a good night's sleep. Hi, my name is Deb and welcome to Women Reinventing Midlife TV, where we aim to inspire women over 50 to thrive in a meaningful life that you deeply desire and deserve. Now, during menopause and postmenopause, sleep deprivation is one of the most common problems that I hear about. I regularly hear women say that they survive on four hours sleep a night, and it's essential to realize that we can't continue to do this over the long term. This is because if we don't have enough sleep, we feel confused, we feel cloudy, it affects our memory, and sleep deprivation has also been linked to some chronic health conditions like heart disease, depression, high blood pressure, diabetes, and I'm sure many others. When we have a good night's sleep, then it increases our vitality and our well-being because during the process of sleep, there are important bodily functions that happen like uh, repair and recovery. It supports our cardiac function. It supports our brain function. It helps us improve our memory. It helps us have clarity and focus. There are so many important functions that take place during the process of sleep. So it's important that we learn how to fix this. And it's important we learn how to fix it as quickly as we possibly can. Eight years ago, when I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue at exactly the time that I went into postmenopause, it really helped me understand why I'd been having four hours sleep nightly for the last 12 months. And, but it didn't actually fix the problem for me. Over the following 12 months, I learned how to retrain myself to have a good night's sleep because I understood why it was so important for me to do that. And today I'm going to be sharing some of those habits that I got into that helped me retrain myself to sleep well. And there's five of them that I'm going to share today. So the first habit is to have regular going to bed times and waking up times. You might have heard this before. This is why it's important, because when you do this, it creates an expectation for your body. And because of this, when you come to go to bed, you find it easier to go to sleep. And so it's important to regularly set the time that you go to bed and regularly set the time that you wake up because your body's going to be ready to wake up in the morning. You're going to be ready to get started instead of feeling groggy. And it's also important to get to bed before 10 o'clock as much as you possibly can, because if you go further than that, it often gives you a second wind, which makes it difficult for you to actually go to sleep when you get to bed. The second habit is to follow your own circadian rhythm, which is your body's internal clock. And we're all different. So it's important to work for you to work out what your body thrives on, what amount of sleep your body thrives on. Now, if you are in a pattern of not being able to sleep, this is going to take some work of retraining your body to actually sleep for you to see how much your body thrives on. A great way to do this is to involve a journal, start writing things down, test yourself how you feel on different types of sleep, you know, different amounts of sleep to find out which amount of sleep is best for your body to thrive. And this even comes down to as detailed as the half hour or the hour, even sleeping half an hour over can actually make you feel more tired than if you had got up half an hour before. If you're someone that gets up on the hour and you're going to the half hour. So it's important to know which one works for you and get out the journal, start experimenting, start logging and see what works for you, which is the best amount of sleep that works for you. And the third habit is to build a good bedtime routine. Our body takes time to wind down. So it's important that we build a great routine that allows our body to wind down. And this can take up to a couple of hours for you to wind down to go to bed. 
If you have a lot of stress in your life, then most definitely it's going to take at least a couple of hours for you to wind down. So some of the ways that we can do this is, again, giving our body the indicator and giving our mind the indicator that we're about to go to sleep. So it's things like having a shower, putting your pajamas on, turning off your computer, turning off your phone, turning off the TV, most especially if you like watching dramas or thrillers or action movies, because this is going to stimulate your sympathetic nervous system, system, which is more likely to keep you awake. So it's important that if you do watch this type of movie, that you turn off the TV and bring your focus to something more relaxing, like reading a nice Nice book, a nice book, not a drama book, not a thriller book, but a nice relaxing book, something that's going to help you chill out. Listening to nice relaxing music. Um, meditating is a great way to do this. When I was retraining myself, I was lucky I lived on the beach run, so I used to listen to the waves outside. So even getting an app on your phone, yeah, you can turn your phone on for this. And listen in, in an app that plays that kind of music, nice, relaxing nature music is going to help your body to wind down. Now, if you're finding this content helpful so far, please subscribe to this channel. I'd love you to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you're notified as soon as the next video comes out. Now, the fourth habit, the fourth habit is great for people who think a lot, who have difficulty switching your mind off. If you're one of these people who has difficulty switching your mind off, you have a tendency to replay problems in your head or you worry about things, this is particularly helpful for you because it's going to help you clear your mind, is to develop a journaling practice. So about half an hour or even an hour before you go to bed, pull out a journal, get yourself a journal that's specific for this. And just start writing, flow writing. What I mean by that is there's no judging of anything that you're writing down. You're just writing it down onto the paper. What this does, it helps you offload the same as it would as if you were talking to a good friend. It helps you offload. And this allows you to clear your mind so that you can relax and get ready for sleep. And the fifth habit is to prepare your bedroom so that it's conducive to a good night's sleep. If your bedroom's too light, it's more likely to keep you awake because it interrupts the circadian rhythm, which is all based on the sun, what's happening with the sun. So if your bedroom's too light, it, it will probably keep you awake. So make sure that your bedroom is dark, even if it means putting some blankets up over your curtains on the window, just while you're retraining yourself to sleep making sure that your bedroom is dark, making sure that your bedroom is the best temperature for you going to sleep. So if your bedroom is too warm, you're more likely to wake up with a hot flush. Um, and if your bedding's too warm, the same thing. So it's important that you have your bedroom the right darkness and that you have your bedroom the right temperature. No TVs in the bedroom either really a bad idea to have a TV in the bedroom. I know a lot of people say they watch the TV to go to sleep, but it's not quality sleep if you're using the TV to get to sleep. So no TVs in the bedroom, no phones in the bedroom. Make sure that your phone is in another room because if your phone lights up during the night and you're in a cycle of sleep where you're more likely to wake up, the phone lighting up is going to wake you up. So make sure that your phone is in another room. And if you use your alarm on your phone to wake up in the morning, then go back to the old fashioned method. Get yourself an alarm clock and let the alarm clock wake you up. Make sure your phone is in the other room. It's going to be great for you, not just getting to sleep, but also staying asleep till it's time to wake up as well. Now, these are some of the habits that I use to retrain myself to have a good night's sleep all those years ago. And I still use those habits to this day. This isn't going to happen overnight. This is about finding what works for you. But I want you to know that when you practice with these kinds of habits over the long term, then you are going to be able to retrain yourself 
to have a good night's sleep again. And that is so important if you want to thrive in this phase of life and well beyond. Now, if you found this video helpful, remember to comment. I'd love to hear your comments. Like the video, share it, and please subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss out. Lots of love to you, and thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video. Lots of love. Bye-bye.